Welcome to our Teaching Kitchen at Home series presented by Mayo Clinic Food Services and Chef Bal. As many of you know, Bal is a world-renowned chef with three national best-selling cookbooks and has hosted two TV shows that have aired around the world. We're excited to create wellness-focused recipes and share them with you. More importantly, we would love for you to cook along with us and learn about the ingredients and cooking techniques that are used. Our cafes will also be featuring Chef Bao's recipes that she will be preparing for us today. So Chef Bao, what are we making today? Thank you, Dr. Mundy, for such a kind introduction. It's such an honor highlighting the power of food. So today's star ingredient is ancient grains. And I have this beautiful ancient grains lined up here. And to serve with ancient grains, I am going to be making my no butter chicken. So there's no butter, no cream, all these amazing flavors are going to be coming from spices. So let's start cooking. So here are the ingredients for my no butter chicken. And I have chicken breast, it's a boneless, skinless, but you can use chicken thighs as well. So this is just a cubed chicken breast. And I'm going to be starting with some onion. I'm just using regular onion. So onion and some garlic and some ginger, all the tremendous amount of health benefits of the onions and garlic and ginger is gonna go right in it. And I'm gonna add some tomato sauce to it to give it a beautiful red color. And I'm going to be adding some yogurt. This yogurt is like a low fat yogurt and some salt and pepper, and a little bit brown sugar, cumin seeds, curry chicken masala, some water. Most important ingredient is my uh, garam masala. Garam means warm and masala means mixture of spices. So this one has a cumin and coriander, clove, nutmeg, all those amazing, amazing spices are right in here. And that's going to be enhancing our no butter chicken. This meal sounds delicious and I can't wait to start cooking. But before we do, Chef Bao, can you tell us a bit more about the main kitchen tools that I should have ready in order to prepare these recipes? Dr. Mundi, that's a great question. Many people ask me that question. For me, is Chef's Knife. This is my life. I love Chef's Knife. It's a nice strong handle and a cutting board. It's very, very important to have a really nice cutting board. So I have this like a nice, solid, amazing cutting board. You can just cut and chop on it without worrying about having it slipping anywhere. And the pot is very important. What I like, it's really nice and big. It's stainless steel. It has a very nice, strong base to it. So it doesn't burn my food, but it caramelizes very nicely. And, and I like it nice and open, so it doesn't crowd my food in it. So this is all you need. So let's get started cooking. So first thing I need is some olive oil. I'm just gonna add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in my pan. Medium heat. I'm gonna add some onions, some ginger, and some garlic. Cook it about um, seven to eight minutes until onions become really nice caramelized. So look at this beautiful color, like onion is changing color and garlic and ginger, all those amazing, amazing flavors are going right in the oil right now. So this is a perfect time for me to add my spices to it. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. I'm gonna add the spices. So this is the, this is the garam masala. As soon as I add garam masala to the, to the pan and with the hot oil and amazing spices, flavors are right in my kitchen. I just absolutely love it. Adding curry chicken masala. To give it a little bit more color, and again, we know the health benefits of the turmeric is so amazing. So maybe half a teaspoon of turmeric. Look at this beautiful color. How nice and golden and beautiful color this is. Adding cumin seeds. So now I'm gonna add a little bit um, brown sugar, it's gonna caramelize um, and going to enhance all the flavors as well. Bring a really nice balance to it. So it's like half a tablespoon. Look how gorgeous this looks. This is just so nice and nice and gold. Now it's perfect time to add some chicken. The tomatoes. So these are just a regular crushed tomatoes, but you can use even fresh tomatoes. So chicken's been cooking for a couple of minutes. This is a perfect time to add yogurt to it because uh, yogurt is going to um, give it really nice sauce. So I am using low fat yogurt and this is the time traditionally people put butter or cream in it, but this is a no butter chicken. So there's no butter, no cream, all really good healthy fat. So Dr. Mundy, can you please tell us a little bit more um, about the good fat? Thank you, Chef Bao. 
I love how you're using yogurt instead of cream or butter to make the sauce. This small change in ingredients preserves the taste but reduces the amount of saturated fat in the meal. When we discuss fats, you may hear us use the words saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, or polyunsaturated fats. The saturated or unsaturated typically refers to whether the fatty acid has a double bond, with the saturated fatty acids having none, the monounsaturated fatty acids having one, and the polyunsaturated having multiple double bonds. What is more important is the role these fatty acids can play in our health, with saturated fatty acids being linked to heart disease. Because of this, the American Heart Association has recommended that we limit our saturated fat intake to five to 6% of our diet in combination with increasing our intake of fruits and vegetables. Now, Let's go back to Chef Bal in her kitchen. That's amazing, Dr. Mundy. What a great information. Honestly, you know, what would I do without you? Seriously, thank you so much for that information. So now I'm going to be adding yogurt to it. Adding some water. So I'm going to let this cook for another four to five minutes until the chicken is fully cooked and we have our no better chicken ready to eat. Sherry, welcome to my kitchen once again. And you're going to absolutely love being in my kitchen today because I know how much you love ancient grains. So here, look what I have. I have it all ready for you to take a look at these beautiful jars of ancient grains. So, so please tell us about ancient grains. Wow, Chef Bell, I love all the variety of ancient grains you have in your kitchen. Ancient grains are a group of grains that have remained mostly unchanged for thousands of years. They're dietary staples in many parts of the world, such as China, India, Africa, and the Middle East. These have gained popularity in recent years because they tend to be less processed and they do boast more minerals and vitamins and fiber than more common grains. Diets high in ancient grains have been linked to health benefits, such as improved blood sugar and reduced inflammation, as well as lowering risk of heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and some cancers. Chef Bell, which ancient grains will you be using with your no butter chicken? Thank you, Sherry, for such an amazing information. That is so incredible how healthy um, our ancient grains are. And today I'm going to be using quinoa. And for that, it is so easy to make. But I love about quinoa that I don't measure. Like for rice, you have to measure. And sometimes for other grains, you have to measure. But quinoa, I don't measure water and I don't measure quinoa. I just uh, put it in and I eyeball it. So I'm gonna tell you how to do this. I'm just gonna have some uh, cold water. It's like three quarters um, filled. And now I'm going to be adding the quinoa, like around uh, one cup. But again, I don't measure. I'm just gonna eyeball it. But if you want to measure it, so it's like a four cups of water to one cup of quinoa. So now I'm gonna bring it to boil. And as soon as those tiny baby uh, ringlets start floating, quinoa is ready. Sometimes people overkick quinoa and then the, it doesn't have a really nice nutty flavor. But you wanna have a nutty flavor, you wanna have a bite, so you don't wanna overcook it. So quinoa is uh, cooking about five minutes now, so let's check out some ringlets. And this is exactly what I was looking for. So as soon as the rings come out and you know it's ready. And you don't want to cook it more than that. I love quinoa and we'll remember that tip. Four cups of water for one cup of quinoa. Quinoa brings more than just great flavor to your meals. It is also gluten-free, high in protein, and one of the few plant foods that contain sufficient amounts of all nine essential amino acids. That makes it a complete protein source. It is also higher in fiber than most grains. Thank you, Sherry. How easy and quick this recipe is. Like within like seven or eight minutes, you have this amazing, flavorful, healthy ancient grain recipe ready. And now it's time to plate. So I'm gonna use this as a base. And traditionally, when you go to India, um, they serve with white rice um, or basmati rice, but this is the way to do it. It's healthy, it's flavorful. I'm gonna serve my no butter chicken on it.
and the sauce is just a perfect amount of sauce. So it's not really runny. And what yogurt does, yogurt and tomato sauce, it thickens it together. Look how beautiful this is. And I'm going to be adding, garnishing it with um, some cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, you can add some basil to it. But how could you not like cilantro? But you know what? I found out some people love cilantro. Some people cannot stand cilantro. And I am the lover. So I absolutely love cilantro. So look how gorgeous this is. Oh, this is so good. The quinoa has a really nice nuttiness. And the yogurt and the tomato sauce gives a really warm, earthy flavor from my, my garam masala spice. So this is really amazing. So thank you, Dr. Mandi. Thank you, Sherry. I don't know what I could have done without you guys. Thank you, Chef Bell. I'm looking forward to trying this in one of our Mayo Clinic food services cafes and can't wait to make it at home. Same here. Thank you, Chef Bao, for teaching us how to make this simple and tasty recipe. So thank you, Mayo Clinic, for joining me in my kitchen again.